Okay, we are now getting in to section 1.2. Section 1.2 talks about the methods of biology. Inside this section, we are going to talk about the scientific method. Then we are going to talk about controlled experiments and variables. We're going to talk about scientific tools. And lastly, we're going to talk about theories and laws. You guys ready to get into this one? All right. So at least most of you said yes. So let's go. Scientific method that is the method that's used in science for conducting experiments and coming up with conclusions. So we're going to talk about the steps of the scientific method now. First step is you make an observation. And that observation leads you to ask a question. Step number two. You, what's the step number two? Anybody knows? You make, you formulate a hypothesis. What's a hypothesis? Kind of an educated guess, right? It's a tentative answer to what the question that you're asking. It's what you think it is based on what you know. After you formulate a hypothesis, what are you going to do next? You're going to test it. How are you going to test it? Experiments. You're going to test your hypothesis by using experiments. And of course, from those experiments, you are going to collect data. And then what do you do with that data? You interpret the results that you get. Um, what happens if your results contradict your hypothesis? What do you want to do then? OK, you want to go back to your hypothesis. You want to reformulate a hypothesis, right? So you're going to go back to the um, hypothesis stage, and you'll do that over again, do some more experiments, get some results, interpret those results. Ultimately, what do you want to do? You want to state your findings, and what do you call that? Your conclusions. So you're going to state your conclusions, but it has to be in a form that it can be evaluated by others. All right, now this is something that you use every day, whether you know it or not. Don't turn over yet. We're staying at this page, and this is where we're going to be for the rest of the class period. All right, I'll give you an example. I am a student at GLA. I am a student at GLA, and I am sitting in the cafeteria. Okay? sitting in the cafeteria, minding my own business, eating my food, and then I look over and I see this girl. And you know what this girl is doing? She's looking at me. She's looking at me and she's talking to her friends and she's giggling. <laughs> she's looking at me and I'm there chilling and I, I, I'm making these observations and it leads me to ask a question. What question do I ask? What's going on, What's going on right? The question I ask is, I heard it somewhere over here. Does she like me? OK. All right, so I make my observations. Um, she's looking at me. She's talking to her friends. She's hee <laughs> Is that a word? It actually is a word, because in my other class, I even wrote the word down here. <laughs> with an with an accent on the last. You, you need to make sure you see, it, you see, see how to spell. <laughs> All right, so she's hewing <laughs> and all that good stuff. So if you're writing it down, that's how you write it. All right, so I've made my observations. I've asked my questions. What is the next step for me to do? Formulate a hypothesis. I am a confident guy, so my hypothesis is, of course she likes me. I mean, come on, what's there not to like, right? All right, so that's my hypothesis. What am I going to do next? Test it. How am I going to test it with? Experiments. So I might, you know, I might walk up to her and be like, how you doing? You know, or, what's going on? Or, blah, blah. I might hold my hand like this and put my leg up. <laughs> that might be a problem. But anyhow, I'm going to do my little experiments. I'm going to go around. I might ask her friends, hey, what do you think about such and such? Do you think she likes me? Blah, 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 blah. I'll go up to her and say, hey, what's up? You want to hang out? Go for a date? We can go to the rec center or, I mean, the, the gym and hang out and play badminton or <laughs> whatever the case might be. Now, let's say I conduct my experiments. I go up and I do all these things, and she turns and she gives me a slap. All right, that's, yeah, I go up to her, I ask her for a date, and she's like, why are you talking to me? Just like that. 
What do I do at that? What do I do at that point? <laughs> Let me ask this question. Did that support my hypothesis? No, no obviously not. It's just slapping me. Uh, we got a problem. So what do I do at that point? I, well, I have to make a new hypothesis. She doesn't like me. But let's say I go up to her and I do all these things. I say, hey, what's going on? You want to hang out, go to the gym, play badminton? And she's like, and her response is more, <laughs> and she says, sure, I'll do anything. And we go out and we, we, we play badminton and she sneaks her hand and holds my hand and blah, blah, blah. I'm getting some results here. Hey, no eyeing in this class, all right? All right? So I, did you say it was cute? Did somebody say that? Oh, we're going to have some problems. All right, so I'm interpreting my results. Can I state a conclusion in this case? Yes, I can. What's my conclusion? Yes, she did like me, and now we get together and all that good stuff. However, <laughs> and this is kind of strange, but if you were doing the full scientific method here, you would have to not just state your conclusions, but you'd have to state it in a form that can be evaluated by others. So you'd write it down, you'd, you'd write you hew hew hewing <laughs> and all that thing. You'd write it in your journal, I don't know what you guys do, all right? And that is the full scientific method, starting with an observation leading to ask a question. Let's do this together so we can know this too. You start out making an observation, leads you to ask a question, and then you do what? Formulate a hypothesis, and then you test your hypothesis with experiments, and then you interpret your results. If it contradicts your hypothesis, then what do you do? reformulate a hypothesis or formulate a new hypothesis. If it supports your hypothesis, then you do what? State a, State a conclusion in a form that can be evaluated. evaluated by others. We spoke about the scientific method. We spoke about experiments. Now, when we're doing experiments, the best type of experiments to do are what we call, what we call controlled experiments. And these are the types of experiments we're going to do in this class. And if you go on to any class, you want to make sure you're doing a controlled experiment. In a controlled experiment, we have two groups. And those two groups are, number one, we have a control group. And this is the, con this is the group that represents the standard condition. Okay, this represents the standard. This, it, it doesn't have anything that we're testing with this group. Um, but then we have an experimental group. And this is the test group that receives experimental treatment. So we have, what's the first group? I don't work like that. I'm sorry. All right, let's try this again. What's the first group? Control, control group. And what's the second group? Experimental. experimental group. And the control group represents the standard conditions, and the experimental group is the one that we're actually testing. All right, so we have two groups so that we can compare the experimental group to the control group. I'll give you an example, and hopefully you can kind of see it. It's a little small. The words are small. But here we have an experiment where we're testing the effect of UV light on the size of frog eggs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have a frog eggs and we have a control group where we just have them in an aquarium with water. Uh, we're not, this is the standard condition. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have an experimental group where we expose this one for, with UV light for, for 15 days. And then in that second one, we expose it for 34 days. Okay, it's not clear on the screen, but 34 days. So we have a control group. Is it 24? It looks like two and a three. Okay, we're going to go with 24 days. All right, so we have control group, standard condition. And in the experimental group, what are we testing here? But what, what about the frog eggs are we testing? UV light. UV light. We're trying to see how the UV light is going to affect the size of the eggs. All right? Are, are you with me so far? Yes. All right. Sweet. Let's move on. Uh, so the, when we're dealing with an experimental group, we have variables. And uh, we have two types of variables. The first uh, variable will be the independent variable. Bless you, wow. <laughs> that was a pretty awesome sneeze. 
All right. We have the independent variable. What type of variable is it? Independent, independent variable. And this is the condition in an experiment that is changed. So this is the one that you're changing. Okay, now ask, let me ask this question. What would be the independent variable with the frog egg experiment? The UV light, right? That's the thing that you're changing. All right? And then there's a dependent variable. And this is the one, the condition in an experiment that changes because of the change in the independent variable. Okay, so because we're changing that first one, it causes a change in the second. What would the dependent variable be with the frog eggs? The size of the eggs. All right, so here we have our um, frog egg experiment. The independent variable would be the UV light. That's the one that we're changing. Here is no light. Here it's um, 15 days, and here we have it for 24 days. And then the dependent variable would then be, as he mentioned, the size of the eggs. Make sense so far? All right, so these are the type of experiments we want to do. We want to have a control group where we can compare it, all right? So we can see, all right, when we don't have any light, maybe it grows, but not much. And then when we expose it to UV light for 15 days, it grows significantly more. And for 24 days, it grows even more, all right? And that's the type of experiment we want to set up. Now, in our labs, in science, there are a number of scientific tools that we can use. A number of them you should be familiar with. Um, beakers, that's an example of a beaker there. You can use test tubes. Here we have a test tube inside of the beaker. Um, hot plates, what's a hot plate? A plate that's hot, good job. <laughs> All right, that's a, I think I have one here that I can show you. Okay, I do have a hot plate, but I can't find it right now. A hot plate is just a, it's a, a machine that you use that warms up. You can set the temperature and you can put the beaker on there or anything else that you need to heat up. Um, that would be a hot plate. It's not, I heard someone say when you put a plate in a microwave, that's not what we're talking about. It's actually a machine that you can control the temperature and so on. P petri dishes, that was what we were seeing in the previous slide where there was a hand holding two little dishes that had um, some stuff in it. That's a petri, petri dish. Graduated cylinders. Um, graduated cylinders are cylinders that have graduations. In other words, you can tell um, it has markings as to one millimeter, one milliliter, two milliliters, and so on. Dissecting instruments, we are gonna use that in this class next semester. I know you guys are all excited about that. And, Last but not least, microscopes. What do, what do microscopes do for us? They let you see things that are very microscopic, very small, right? Um, things that you might not otherwise see. You can put it under a microscope, and then you can see it. When I was doing my master's, um, and I was dissecting crickets, imagine dissecting a cricket. We had to use really, really small scissors, and we had to do it under a microscope, because it's really small. And it's very kind of precise and tricky to do, but we'd, we'd use microscopes. And of course, there are many other scientific tools that we can use. These are just some of the ones that we're going to be doing, we're going to be using in class. Now, uh, the difference between a theory and a law. What is a theory? a theory? A theory is a hypothesis that is supported over a long period of time. So you have a hypothesis. And you test the hypothesis. You test it again. It's been tested in many different ways. Eventually, <coughs> you get enough data and support for that to become not just a hypothesis anymore, but a theory. So which one is stronger, hypothesis or theory? Theory, theory is obviously stronger. All right, and a law is a fact of nature that is generally known to be true. What do I mean by that? Well, if I take this object and I hold it here and I release it, what's going to happen? Gravity. It's going to drop. What is that law? Gravity. The law of gravity. That is a fact of nature and we, it's, it's genuine, genuinely, generally known to be true. What goes up come must come down. I don't care how you do it. Well, unless you're in a zero G type of a situation. All right, so, for example, the law of gravity, that would be an example. Believe it or not, that's the end of section 1.2.